Welcome to Rogue Football. I'm your host, Jordan DeLugo. Thanks so much for tuning in here. It is Combine Week. The NFL Combine is upon us. Some key dates to remember, though, for offensive work, which we're going to get into our offensive prospects to watch here today. Tight ends, they will hit the field on Friday. Running back, quarterback, wide receiver Saturday. Offensive line Sunday. So you're not getting any on-field work early in the week here. You'll have to wait till later in the week to see these guys. But we're going to dive into prospects to watch on the offensive side of the ball for each position group for some positions i've got more guys than others and there's going to be plenty of prospects that i'll be interested in seeing that will not be on this list this is just narrowing it down to uh, several guys at each position where I'm, I'm really fired up to see how it goes for them at the combine i did have drake may listed but we just got word from Josina Anderson, that he's not going to be really participating in the on-field work. Obviously, if Caleb Williams or Jaden Daniels were out there, they would be at the top of that list as well. But since they're not at quarterback, I'm really interested in seeing Spencer Rattler. I would not be surprised if among the quarterbacks that are out there actually throwing the football, Spencer Rattler looks like he has the most talented arm. Because, quite frankly, I think he might have the most talented arm out of all those guys. It's been a rocky road for Spencer Rattler, and he's shown a lot of growth, a lot of development during the last couple years at South Carolina. A guy who I think could go higher than some people expect. Somebody who, a few years back, after his freshman year at Oklahoma, people were talking about him being a first-round pick, maybe even a, a top pick in the NFL draft. Now it's been several years, again, ups and downs throughout his career, but Rattler absolutely has a superlative arm. Excited to see him spin it out there. J.J. McCarthy as well, just because so many people have kind of uh, just taken a look at the stats and been like, oh, J.J. McCarthy, he's not been very productive as a quarterback. At Michigan, they don't throw the the football a lot. So it's kind of hard to get a real gauge on where he is as a passer. I think he has tremendous talent. I think he has a very talented arm. I'm excited to see him out there throwing the football as well. At running back, very hard to narrow it down. So many prospects who I think from like the second round all the way through the rest of the draft are are really intriguing. And guys that are going to come in and whether they're full-time starters or or in a, a committee, in the backfield, they're going to be able to be productive in the NFL. I've got three guys we're going to really talk about here and then a bunch of guys I want to list off just to say I'm watching these guys as well. But Marshawn Lloyd out of USC, this is a guy that brings enough size and power to really kind of be a feature back in the NFL, but also incredible speed, quickness, uh, start and stop ability. A guy who it's going to be really interesting to see how he tests. Uh, I think that he could run a lot faster than some people expect. And then Trey Benson, who is my RB1 right now out of Florida State. He's a big, big running back. But this is the type of guy that not only does he have the size and the power contact balance, he shows some wiggle in the open field. And most importantly, he is a runner that can hit an incredible top speed. I think he topped out at like 22 miles per hour in 2023 on the field with pads on with the ball in his hands he can absolutely fly out there so seeing what he runs in the 40 yard dash will be interesting and then Braylon Allen out of Wisconsin such an interesting back because he's like upper 230s in terms of his weight but he's got some speed to him and he's only 20 years old so this is someone that's going to be really interesting to see where teams end up valuing him and how he ends up looking out there um during these these testing drills and, and some of the on-field work. But some of the other running backs I'm really interested in watching, Jalen Wright out of Tennessee, Ray Davis, Kentucky, Blake Corum out of Michigan. Corum has been one of the most productive backs we've seen, but how does he test? Will Shipley out of Clemson, I think he can be a versatile back that can really help you out in the passing game. Bucky Irving as well out of Oregon. Audric Estime, another really big runner. So is Isaac Guerrero, but I think both of those guys will be able to put up some impressive times in the 40-yard dash. Jace McClellan, a former big-time recruit, went to Alabama, dealt with some injuries there, kind of a forgotten guy, but somebody who brings talent to the field. Rasheen Ali out of Marshall, very talented as well. Dejan Edwards, I think, can be kind of that third down back out of Georgia that a lot of teams are looking for. Frank Gore Jr., He's got talent. He's got a lot of the skills that his dad brought to the field. Not as big as Frank Gore Sr., but it'll be interesting to see how he looks out there. Keelan Robinson from Texas, number seven. Uh, not nearly as big as Bijan Robinson, but he is really explosive in his own right. Going to be interesting to see how he looks out there. And then Kamani Vidal, my guy from Troy, cannot wait to see what he does. I think that he is a, a big-time sleeper in this class. At wide receiver, Brian Thomas Jr., 
this guy's going to blow it up. Six foot four, 205 pounds. We'll see where he comes in at from a weight wise perspective, but he has tremendous leaping ability. He is absolutely a burner, very quick, kind of glides out there on the football field, has that effortless sort of athleticism. Um, but we'll see how he looks. I'm, I'm interested to see how he looks in the receiving drills and the gauntlet. Um, I don't think he always looks like he has the most natural hands, so it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. A guy who does have very natural hands, Adonai Mitchell coming out of Texas by way of Georgia. He's six foot four. What will he come at weight wise? Um, a guy that was listed at below 200 pounds. If he can kind of get close to 200 pounds and still run well and look like the guy you see on tape, I think that'll be really uh, positive for him. And I think he can. Uh, I think he can jump out of the building. I think he's going to probably run sub four or five. So another guy I can't wait to see. Troy Franklin, he's six foot three, but listed at 187 pounds at Oregon. How much does he weigh coming in here? And then uh, if he is able to put on weight, because at six foot three, you do want to weigh more than 185 pounds. You really would like to be at least be in the 190s. How fast does he run? Because on tape, he's one of the fastest receivers in this class. He, he looks like a four three guy. Uh, so we'll see how that plays out for Troy Franklin out of Oregon. Another guy you want to see the hands has had some drop issues. Does he look natural in the gauntlet? I think he shows the ability to pluck the ball out of the air. I think you've just seen some focus drops. So we'll see about that for Troy Franklin. Keon Coleman, another one. I think he is in a really explosive athlete. How much does he come in when he's six foot four, probably over 215 pounds, but very twitchy, very explosive. Can he run sub four or five? I would not be surprised if he does. I really think that he's a special athlete. A lot of people are kind of underselling throughout this draft process and nitpicking. Roman Wilson, we know he's going to run really fast, probably in the four threes. What's really impressive about him, though, not only is he a burner, but he's probably going to be in the 99th percentile or close to it in the three cone drill and the short shuttle. So a guy that brings a lot of athleticism to the table. And then Xavier Leggett at wide receiver, a one year breakout, late breakout here at South Carolina, but six foot one over 220 pounds. He is built out there. I mean, he looks like, you know, DK Metcalf light and a guy who blew up at South Carolina this year. He can high point the football um, he had the fastest time speed of any ball carrier in the NFL or college in 2023. So how does he look out there? Does he look like a natural catching the football and running some of these routes? At tight end, you've obviously got Brock Bowers and Jatavion Sanders. I want to see both of them in all these drills because I think they're both really, really good athletes. But my guy, sleeper here at tight end, Jared Wiley out of TCU, started out at Texas, transferred to TCU. I'm not going to make the comparison that I want to make. It sound crazy, but I will just say Jared Wiley is a tight end prospect that I think can come in and have an immediate impact as a receiver. You move him around the formation, he can find space, he can run, he does not drop the football at all. Jared Wiley is a, a tight end that I'm really excited to see how he performs at the combine and then where he ends up going in the 2024 NFL draft at offensive tackle, really hard to narrow it down, but I do want to see Olu Fashanu go out there and show like, yeah, I am the elite athlete that everyone was talking about for the last couple of years. I am the guy that should have been a top five pick. If I came out last year, obviously uh, Joe Alt and some of these other guys have kind of narrowed the gap and maybe even overtaken Olu Fashanu in terms of where they will get drafted. But Fashanu is an elite pass protecting tackle. He's a guy that has tremendous athleticism and overall uh, physical profile. So Fashanu is someone I want to see out there. Amarius Mims. If Amarius Mims was able to get more reps the last couple of years, I do believe he would be the top tackle in this class. That's how freaky he is. Six foot seven, nearly 340 pounds. He's probably going to weigh in at. Got very good length, very good strength, a great athlete, good flexibility at that size. And you talk about him compared to some of the other projecty type guys. I really don't see him as a project, even though he only has eight starts under his belt. He looks like somebody who's played a lot more football than he has. He's way ahead of, of like Tyler Guyton or Patrick Paul or or even Karan Amagaji, who we're about to talk about. But I think that Mims, again, if he had more more tape, would be potentially the first tackle off the board. J.C. Latham out of Alabama was listed at 360 this year, carried it very well, but interested to see where he comes in at weight-wise because this is a player that – I think at 360, that's kind of a historical outlier at tackle. I don't think you want to be playing that high. But a guy that has tremendous strength, 
very good athleticism for his size. How does he look out there, and how does he weigh in? Can't wait to see that. And Kieran Amagaji out of Yale wasn't able to go to the Senior Bowl, but a guy who has tremendous physical traits, length, athleticism, all that stuff. Excited to see him be able to put that um, on the field in front of these NFL scouts and really uh, kind of get his name back into uh, the range where it should be, which is probably early second round. And then Kingsley Suamata'ia, he is going to blow up this combine. I think that he's going to run incredibly fast, be very explosive uh, out of BYU. At guard, Dominic Pooney, can't wait to see what he looks like because this guy that might have five position flex legitimately, like he played tackle at Kansas and did a really good job there, can play guard, did some center work also at the at the Senior Bowl. So Dominic Pooney, just one of my favorite players in this class, and I want to see him test well. Christian Haynes, kind of in a similar boat in terms of just guys I love the way they play the game. So much physicality, violence, really good uh, punch strength. And Christian Haynes, he can mirror, he can anchor. I think that he is going to show that even though he played at UConn, kind of a less lesser competition, the Senior Bowl was no fluke. Christian Haynes is is legit. Uh, Cooper Beebe out of Kansas State. This is a guy that probably short arms, maybe not the best athlete, but getting him into the bag work, the drill work, on field stuff. I think he is going to absolutely. Uh, pop some guys that are out there trying to hold up these bags. And I think the same thing about Mason McCormick, two very violent interior offensive linemen that that should show out um, in the on-field work. And then at center, it's the big three, Jackson Powers, Johnson, Zach Frazier, Graham Barton. I love all three of these prospects. I think they're all going to be starters at center for a very long time at a very high level in the NFL. Jackson Powers Johnson is 330 pounds. He is such an interesting build at center. So big, doesn't have great length, but uh, technically refined, recovers incredibly well, brings the energy. You see him getting out on screens to the second, third level, all the way down the field, blocking for his guys. I love Jackson Powers Johnson. Zach Frazier, kind of more of that uh, prototypical center build, not quite as big, but a little bit better length, very good act- athlete, uh, very quick feet. Graham Barton played a lot of tackle at Duke, did play center his freshman year, but I'm excited to see him out there um, kind of working as a center prospect versus a, a tackle because I just don't think he has the length to survive at tackle, but a guy that I think all three of these guys, primarily centers, I think all three of them could actually play guard as well in the right scheme. So we'll see how it plays out for these guys. Really want to see Zach Frazier out there because, you know, broken leg at the end of the season for West Virginia. Went to the Senior Bowl, wasn't able to fully participate, obviously. But a guy who I'm told or I've heard is going to be able to participate in the Combine this week. So excited to see him out there, kind of get his name back on people's radars. But that'll do it for this offensive preview for the 2024 NFL Scouting Combine, kind of looking at some prospects I cannot wait to see out there. Really appreciate y'all tuning in. Have a good one.